Hi everybody, this is Brian David Marshall coming to you from the Tournament Center at the Magic the Gathering World Championships in San Francisco. We are just starting day three, the first couple rounds of modern, the team rounds are behind us. I'm here with David Ochoa from Channel Fireball, member of the U.S. national team. Talk about a format we don't get to talk about in the Tournament Center very often. And something, something, a format that's kind of dear to your heart, Legacy? Yeah, Legacy. You get to play with some sweet cards. Uh, you know, you've, you've been a, for a you know, long, long, playing for a long time. Yeah, I and, mean, think that's, that's polite for saying that I'm old. <laughs> so, I mean, you were playing with, uh, you were playing vintage when people called it magic? Yeah, it was just, you know, playing, the vintage was, you know, mono red, sly, mono black, uh, keeper, with moat and Sarah angel, mana drain, the abyss. Very cool stuff, and then you know it's slowly evolved after time. You know, refined itself. People actually started playing it and making good decks. So now uh, you 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 manned the legacy leg of the team portion mm -hmm. for the United States, and you're playing a deck. I mean, I know it has a lot of different names. People call it like Stone Blue White, Stone Forger. But mm -hmm. I mean, looking at this this list here, it looks like the like the Blue White Standard All Stars. Yeah, what we've got are basically the uh, the best blue and white spells that you can play in Legacy. Uh, you got the, the 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 basis of the deck is uh, Snapcaster Mage, Stoneforge Mystic, in addition with uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor for a lot of card advantage, and then a, a rather robust suite of uh, controlling cards: so uh, Swords to Plowshares, uh, Force of Will, Spell Snare, and Counter Spell, and then the, the smoothing of uh, Brainstorm. <laughs> and then and then you even have a couple of uh, uh, cards that we saw in Fairies, which yeah, is yeah. a Standard dominant deck for a long time. There's some uh, good cards against uh, the, con the combo decks like Vendillion Click and then Spell Stutter Sprite counters a lot of the cheap stuff that your counters won't necessarily mesh match up very well against. Right. Spell, Spell Stutter Sprite often just is going up against like a Duress or yeah, a, a, a deck with a lot therapy. of one one or two mana spells. And there it's uh, supplement or it's uh, supported by the the Vendillion Clicks, which are also fairies, and uh, then uh, Mutavault and re Recursion with a uh, Riptide Lab. Sure, we, we saw uh, years ago. We saw Gabriel Nassif, uh, yeah, in, uh, Berlin, in Berlin, playing uh, a, a fairies deck that had Riptide Lab, and then eventually we've seen like Wizards. Yeah, there are a lot. There have been a lot of evolution of uh, Riptide Lab decks, and uh, this newest edition is uh, Snapcaster Mage, which is just really awesome for this type of deck because the uh, I mean it just lets you gain incremental card advantage through the, the recursion of your s uh, removal and counter spells you'll just keep on getting ahead s slowly and then you'll eventually just take over the game and be able to win right so you basically you just keep playing lands keep keep just developing your board and then mm -hmm. whatever your opponent does you're able to brainstorm at the end of their turn bounce your snapcaster mage back yeah you can just there's all sorts of stuff that you can do uh, and then talk, talk up a little bit about the equipment package. All right, so uh, we have our everyone's favorite card, Stoneforge Mystic, and its uh, supporting cast, uh, Batter Skull and Sword of Feast of Famine. Oh. If uh, you remember back from uh, PT Paris, I think, uh, this is the, the, the combination that was used to just pretty much uh, take control of the tournament, so to speak. You got Batter Skull, which is really, really good against the aggro decks, just because they have it's, it's very hard for them to deal with, just a, a two-mana lifelink over the, over the course of two turns. And then uh, you have Sword and Feast of Fan, which is it's used against uh, the control decks and against the, the green base decks where you have uh, Tarmogoyf. And it, depending on where you're at in the game, you can either use it offensively or defensively because you'll be able to block pretty well and, and whatnot. Right, you can even, I saw a couple games where you were able to move it back and forth, attack, untap your mana, and then move it over to uh, another, you know, Stoneforge Yeah, the, Forge there, there are a lot of uh, different things that you can use. Like you, yeah, like you said, attack, get a free turn's worth of mana and then re-equip to wherever you want so they can't attack you back. Sure. Uh, you also have uh, everyone's favorite uh, uh, combo. Self-made card, the <laughs> Crucible of the Worlds. Uh, yeah, the, most decks, you won't actually see this card uh, being played in it. Uh, but I wanted to use it in conjunction with uh, Wasteland. And then uh, since they're all, Wasteland has been getting a bit more popular in, in uh, Legacy, you can uh, use it to get back your special lands, the Lab and Mutavolt. And one of the other reasons why I wanted to use Wasteland is because a lot of the other decks have been adapting to this deck by adding lands like Tower of the Magistrate, which uh, will give a creature protection from artifacts. So that's really problematic for your equipment cards. So if you can sure. get rid of that, then you sh your equipment will be able to so, be functional again. So they'll, they'll use Tower of the Magistrate on your on germ your, token. Yeah, on your germ token. And then the, 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 the germ dies, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you just you won't be able to... It'll, you'll have a hard time ever equipping it to one of your creatures again. But Wasteland will take care of that and then... If you have Crucible, then you can get your, your lands back and just slowly uh, 
or sure. take out their mana base. You can also use fetch lands with Crucible to just yeah, keep developing your, you can your mana. You can use them as another shuffle effect, and Crucible is just a pretty uh, well-rounded card. So, uh, Snapcaster Mage lives up to the hype? Uh, yes, yes, he's uh, exceeded my expectations. I, I am definitely happy that he's uh, being, uh, that he's so popular in, in all, across all of the formats. He's a pretty, uh, pretty useful card. You can just do so much stuff with him in, in Legacy because you have a lot of the, uh, the, a lot of the cantrips that you wouldn't normally be able to play in other formats like uh, Ponder and Preordain, Brainstorm. This uh, Snapcaster Mage is just excellent. Right. Uh, I, I'm definitely seeing him four of in Legacy lists, four of in Modern lists. Mm -hmm. But when we were looking at Standard lists, I, I, you see him not quite uh, always at four of, and is that because the instants and sorceries in standard are just not as good as you know brainstorms and sword to plowshares and? Yeah, it's the Snapcaster's mage, uh, mage's value is going to be uh, increase and decrease based on the the relevant power level of the the whatever you have access to, and so in, in standard it's, in, it's it's good, but it's it's not as good as the other formats just because the uh, uh, everything in the other formats like legacy, a lot of your spells are much cheaper and much more powerful. Sure, T talk about. Uh, this is a this is another card uh, that has you know you can get back with your crucible if it gets wastelanded. But what what does Caracas do for you? Well, Caracas is uh, one of your outs to uh, uh, reanimator decks. They'll often try and uh, cheat a uh, Iona uh, Shield of Maria into play, and then uh, if they name the uh, the right color like uh, blue or white, but based on what they know about your hand, they might be shutting off a Swords of Plowshares or Jace the Mind Sculptor, which the, you'd be, normally be able to use to just get rid of it. And so Caracas will act as a free way to uh, just return it to a hand, and, and it's uh, pretty useful. And it also serves as a second Riptide Laboratory with the Vendillion Click, Yeah, right? you can get uh, Vendillion Click Recursion, and that's, that ends up being pretty solid also. So uh, let's talk quickly about the sideboard. Okay. Uh, speaking of standard all-stars, it's, it's always nice to see this. I mean, you know, Day of Judgment's good and all. Yeah, not, nothing is as classic as Wrath of God, though, and, it, and one of the better pictures. They're not beta, but they, it, is, it does look very nice. We have a... Uh, I mean, for the, uh, the the creature heavy decks, we have Wrath of God and uh, Path to Exile, as well as uh, another Batter Skull and Elspeth Knight Aaron. And a lot of the times uh, against some of the more one of the more popular decks right now, which happens to be a uh, blue, uh, green, red sort of tempo orientated deck with sure uh, that's the Delver Secret yeah, stack so the, that everyone's been raving about. Yeah, the Delver Secret stack, Snapcaster Tarmogoyf deck. They'll bring in cards like Red Elemental Blast and Spell Pierce and and just cheap ways to sort of uh, force through their, their spells against your blue spells. And cards, they, they don't really have a, a very good card advantage engine, and that's where, uh, that's where Wrath of God and Path to Exile really shine, because they don't run very many creatures, so they're really reliant on Tarmogoyf and a Flip Delver. So if you ever have access to a Path to Exile, and then uh, it, once that happens, a Snapcaster Mage, it's very hard for them to come back from that. In fact, I, I watched you playing against a rug deck in the fourth round of the teams, and you Path to Exile, and he didn't even have yeah, he was any staring. basic lands to go get? Oh yeah, they run eighteen lands, no no basics, and it's just it's swords to plowshares against them, but better. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Flutterstorm. Flusterstorm is from the Commander decks. Yeah, it's uh, one of the pretty sweet one of the cards that has transitioned over from that set to uh, a lot of the legacy sideboards. It's primarily used against the uh, combo decks and sort of overlapping with spell pierce. Uh, Plus, Storm can't really counter artifacts or enchantments like Sneak Attack or Hive Mind, uh, Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond, but it's against the instance of sorceries, it's generally going to be better because they'll play, whenever they play one, you'll be able to play Fluster Storm for at least Spell Pierce, and if not more. And it's very, it's against cards like Pack, Neg Pack Negation, then it's, it gets better and better just because it's individual copies, just like a. Oh, you see, right, so because it has Storm. Yeah, that it's, it adds up. Yeah, if they're running counter spells as a backup for their plan, then it, Flusterstorm is going to uh, trump the, those uh, answers. Uh, another, another oldie but goodie, the just basic disenchant. Yeah, uh, a lot of uh, disenchant disenchant effects are. That's something that I wanted to have access to, uh, just to deal with uh, problematic cards like choke, for example, which uh, this deck is not well equipped to, to sure. normally handle. That's that's generally one of the the trump cards that uh, green based decks will uh, bring in against. Uh, this deck, and so it, it, co it combos with Snapcaster Mage. Uh, although it is a, a bit narrow, I mean, there are other cards like uh, Orm's Thunder if you have access to red, or Oblivion Ring, which is generally a, a better card, but it obviously doesn't work with Snapcaster Mage. If you're running something like Cunning Wish, then you'd be able to have access to Disenchant also. So it's it's a overall it's a reasonable utility card. Although you won't see you won't generally have a, a good use for it in in some metagames. So you're purifying the grave. This was your nod to Dredge. 
Yeah, my my standard three card sideboard and stretch, which is uh, not exactly uh, uh, enough to, to handle mo most of the times. So this it, it also doubles against uh, a, a sideboard card for uh, the reanimator matchup, but you just use it to uh, I mean it, what, just cough and purge whatever is the most threatening. And, and why why not leyline of the void? Oh, well, leyline of the void is a a pretty good answer, but unfortunately you you have to. This deck would not be able to cast it, so you'd have to mulligan into it, which can uh, be something that you don't necessarily want to do. I uh, I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted to go uh, which one on it was better, so I just went with Luster Storm or with uh, Purify the Grave because the that's what everyone else was running. Okay, so you went uh, you went three and one in Legacy. Yep. Uh, the team came into day three in fourth place. You guys are in about tenth place right now. Yeah. And uh, you need some truck finishes. You feel good with your modern decks? Yeah, it's pretty solid. I think. Stayed up uh, till about 1 a.m. building it. I mean, testing it. I mean, the deck that we already had for weeks. <laughs> uh, all three players on the U.S. national team uh, on the same modern list. Or are you guys in different three different directions? Um, the I think they're in a, a different direction. Okay. We couldn't really come to a, a consensus. Okay. Well, uh, good luck the rest of the way. I have a I have a wager going on with my commentator. You oh, guys, yeah? I don't. I mean, I'd like you guys to win, but I just want you to finish ahead of Great Britain. Oh, oh, I see how it is. Just. So, so, uh, so keep up the good work. One, one, one step above Rich Hagon's team, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Uh, so for David Ochoa, this is Brian David Marshall saying, uh, you know, America the Beautiful or something like that.